Welcome back everyone. The reason why I'm starting the video in here looking at the mirror is because I wanted to show you some of my camera gear that I routinely use uh, to make my videos. I use a uh, GoPro. It's the Hero 9 version. I prefer the Hero 9 right now uh, rather than stepping up to one of the other new ones. On the uh, Hero 9 I have the media uh, case pack which gives me the super microphone and on the side I have this uh, light which I can use. I'll show you how that works. It has several brightnesses and when I'm under the car or doing work under the hood this is what I'll use to enhance the, the image. Works great. It's separate. It charges on its own. It doesn't take any camera power. Uh, then I have the uh, mount that you see it on right now which is fully flexible. I can bend it in any different angle. And on the bottom, you can see it has this uh, clamp feature, which is great. I can clamp this on the side of the hatch, the door, uh, under the hood, anywhere I need to, and then bend the camera to a position where you folks can, can see it clearly. Another mount that I like to use is this low profile uh, clampy mount. And uh, I'll use this a lot if I'm under the vehicle uh, when you see camera views looking upward, the camera is sitting on this, this is on the ground, and then I can bend and just move the camera wherever uh, I need it to be. The last video, I wanted to tell you something because this is very interesting to me. I had some audio problems, but the camera was on its mount, everything should have been fine, it should have been using this microphone. But what happened was, when I swapped the battery, the camera was at that time turned on. So when I pulled the camera out of this media mount, it became disconnected from this microphone. I swapped the battery, turned the camera on, and when I put the camera back into this media mount, the connection uh, on the media mount case was not recognized. And what happened then was that the microphone up here didn't get turned on. It was still trying to use the camera microphone which is right here, but uh, just the sound is totally terrible. It's totally different. So that didn't work so well, and uh, it sounded like I was underwater. Uh, but that's what this camera is designed for. It's designed to be completely submerged and, and work fine that way, which it does very well. So today the weather outside is, is very nice. It's a, a beautiful day. It's a little cool right now. It's, it's mm, early-ish mid-morning. It's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Um, I've got to finish the diesel heater today. There are time constraints and you'll know that uh, reasoning in the next two or three episodes. So diesel heater has to absolutely be finished today and I've got to take a look uh, at a couple of other things uh, that'll be necessary. Um, the other day, um, it hasn't been uh, posted on a video yet, I did some pre-work on the fuel tank. Uh, I had some time uh, available quickly so uh, I used that time and did some work on the fuel tank getting it ready to be used for the diesel heater. So um, I'm going to go downstairs and get Vanny uh, out and get the back axle up onto ramps and um, that's so we can have space to work underneath to get the fuel line put in and also now that I have normal human tools we can go ahead and uh, and uh, check all of the uh, uh, the screw tightening uh, abilities of my uh, needle nose pliers from last week. Anyhow, um, so you take a look. I'm going to uh, switch you over to the video of what I had to do for the fuel tank. Take a look at that and uh, I'll see you back here uh, soon. Uh, well actually I'll be downstairs in the driveway. Uh, so you take a look at that video and uh, I'll talk to you very shortly. See you soon. Next part we're going to do here is get the uh, fuel tank ready to go and to accept fuel. And what I have to install right now is this fuel gauge. And uh, this flat piece up here needs a good solid uh, smooth area to fit into. And the hole that we're going to drill has to be big enough to accept this uh, floating uh, magnet, I believe, that would be in here to use uh, potentiometer type uh, rules, rheostat type thing. So anyhow, 
the best area that I can see, there's a lot of print, not enough area here that's smooth. These are too low, they won't fit the mount. So this area right here, and as you can see, just has a little bit of print right here at the bottom. So this will fit right here in this corner and uh, not a bad spot. So that fits. Now the silicone uh, dried up very solid on the top here, but when you take the, uh, the center cap off, the silicone underneath is quite fresh. So that is fine. So I'll put this here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And it doesn't need to be a tremendous amount, but you do want enough. It's not a problem if it squishes out a bit. Not going to hurt anything. And uh, it's later in the day here right now, and it's uh, supposed to be raining soon. So what I'll do is get this all put together, and then let it uh, dry, set uh, overnight, and then go ahead and uh, Get some fuel tomorrow. All right, so we're ready for the gasket. Let's try this. Exciting. Here we go. All righty. And looks like the holes are matching up quite well. Good, good. All right. Now I'm going to put some more on here so when it's uh, seated down on the tank it's going to have a good seal. Now here's something else. Let me turn this around. This fuel tank was originally designed for outboard motors, for being on the water, fishing and traveling and whatnot. It comes with this connector hole, and there already is a built-in uh, line for the fuel draw all the way down to the bottom of the tank. So anyhow, what I'm going to do is use this port to actually feed the diesel heater. So this is the only hole I needed to drill. That's it, we're done. So I'm gonna flip this over, leave it for the night, let this dry fully. And then tomorrow, uh, actually the next episode, we'll get into uh, putting some fuel in here. I'm gonna put a bit in and I'll explain why tomorrow that I don't fill it right up. And then we'll go ahead, I have the adapter. We'll mount that in here run the outside fuel line, uh, connect all our proper electrical connections to the diesel heater, and that should be good to go. As you can see, the uh, diesel fuel tank got what it needed. And it's all dry, and everything looks really good, nice and tight and snug. The uh, connector cable to the uh, display the meter is actually uh, good to go, perfect. And uh, the inside is clean. I had checked that before I glued this down, so that looks good. So what I'm thinking is we're going to do, perfect, is the basement wall right here has a front to it here and this side, and it's uh, got some kind of metal plate down to about here. I'll show that to you very shortly. I'm not sure if that's going to interfere with anything or not. Um, we'll have to find out. And as you can see, I've labeled it appropriately, diesel fuel only, just so I don't forget, or anybody else forgets, if uh, somebody assists me with uh, filling up the tank, who knows? As you know, the heater being <clears throat> on the other side, it's going to take air from the basement area, heat it, and then send it back up. Uh, so with these hatches in the down position, 
there will be really no way for the heater to get its air. So we have this vent. And uh, I've already tagged it open. It's uh, not going to close. And I need to put this uh, vent somewhere where it's going to be able to uh, get air comfortably and yet not cause an interference. Now the bed comes up to about here, about halfway. So that leaves this door, not to mention it's too small, as you can see. So that leaves this door or this door. And I was thinking about this quite a lot lately. If I use this one, the issue is uh, potentially that it's going to get a lot of foot dirt and or any other things falling in, not to mention part of it will be covered by the bed, which only leaves this part of the hatch. Um, and that's plenty big. And when the seat comes back, it'll be about here. That still leaves a crap ton, plus this will be sit down, so it won't affect anything. And the airflow will certainly travel over the battery and everything will be tickety-boo. So uh, what we're gonna do is remove this door uh, from the floor, maybe. I just remembered I have wires through it. Um, anyhow, we'll have to turn this up and bring it out somehow so that we can uh, bring it out and uh, do the cutting so that it doesn't create a heck of a mess. Everything seems to be coming loose here successfully. Oh yeah, yeah, whoa. That's nice. There we are. And let go, let go, there you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. My favorite go-to, my silver marker. This thing is magic. Now, Wow, see what I mean? Perfect. Oh yeah, drills nice and easy, that's for sure. Now, <clears throat> I promise you I will try not to drill through my foot. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Is it? It's a. Uh, it's like accordion or corrugated cardboard, with almost like a plaster material on top and bottom, and then the carpet is glued to that. Wow, very lightweight and uh, absolutely strong. Crazy. And it's in. Perfect. Ooh, I got it dirty everywhere. Hey, dirty girl. Okay. Perfect. There we go. Get its uh, sister in here. Nice and tight. Oh, they're tightening up pretty good, that's for sure. Whatever that material is, unless there's some type of uh, maybe a metal catch tab or something on the other side. There. Alrighty, so what we can do is bring this down 
<clears throat> but we'll keep an eye on it and see if this leaves enough space between the top of the battery. <laughs> now I'd better get these uh, wires through properly here. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to absolutely say yes. So can you see in there? I think you can. Um, easily. There's, uh, oh, uh, about six centimeters, maybe more, half an inch. So that has tons of breather space. And we can see that just by undoing this. And... You can probably see better than me. Yeah, tons of space. Vent is in. So even in winter, I can turn the auto turn control on to just to recirculate air, blow air, and it will recirculate air out through the vents in through here and maintain the battery in its proper uh, uh, temperature zone. Because remember, a lithium iron phosphate battery uh, below zero degrees is dangerous to charge. You can <clears throat> wipe out your battery's goodness in a very short period of time. It has to stay above freezing. It will discharge. You can power lights and things below zero to a certain point, uh, but to charge it, you'd be screwed. And uh, so this is gonna be a great device. Okay, we're going to uh, scoot underneath and we're going to uh, tighten up everything that I've previously installed uh, just for safety and security since uh, the needle nose pliers may not have done a 100% uh, perfect job. So let's uh, snug these up. And uh, let's use the proper size this time and Tighten up the muffler. Tighten up to the small tailpipe here. Excellent. All right, so here's the fuel line that comes with the auto term heater. It's a rather small gauge, if you can see it, there we go, um, but very stiff. And the reason for that is because of the fuel pump having to have its pressure maintained from wherever you mount the fuel pump all the way to the, the heater itself. Uh, what I did <coughs> is I bought I bought enough secondary uh, fuel line. This is proper fuel line, but it's a much larger gauge and the auto term fuel line will fit perfectly inside this. And here's my theory. For the run uh, completely outside the vehicle, I'm going to put the auto term fuel line inside this fuel line merely for protection from anything from the road. It has nothing to do with uh, carrying diesel, it won't. It's just going to act as a protector for this line. That's it. Uh, pretty simple and easy. So what we're going to do uh, momentarily is take this piece down. This is a soft sort of flex fuel line. We'll push this over the uh, input to the diesel fuel on the uh, heater. And then the auto term line goes into this. It needs to be seated as far as possible. Hopefully this end of the fuel line should touch the end of the output uh, nipple on the diesel heater so that there should be no diesel fuel traveling through the soft part of this rubber if possible. 
and I think that's doable. We'll spray some uh, WD-40 or some oil inside here first. That will allow us to seat everything um, much easier. All right. Now, I might even <laughs> loosen this just a bit more because I just want to bring that down a tad. Is, uh, believe me, I don't want to crawl under here to fix anything at any point ever down the road. I want to do this once and it's got to be right. Okay, I'm trying to flip this. There we go. And let's tighten it up. I'm going to get my finger in there. And this is why I put it in the protective jacket, so that uh, it would have the ability to, uh, you know, be turned and uh, not give too much of a problem. I'm put the other one right here. Nice fit. And this is why I put the fuel line in this second wall, fuel wall, right? To uh, keep it uh, all good. Well, it's nice. Look at that. It's going to just clear the uh, rear brake lines. That is perfect. This silicone sets up so quickly. Um, that uh, that's what we want. I need it to set up fast because the vehicle will be in motion in a few hours. Uh, number one, I have things I need to do today. Uh, plus, I will be getting fuel shortly. Again, it doesn't matter if I uh, get some silver on the bottom of this uh, plastic because it will be underneath as it goes through that hole. Then, uh, yeah. So, let us remove this door again. Yay.
Okay. I say the first one that I run will be uh, from the basement up to this. All right, so here are the uh, pin connectors uh, that come from the uh, diesel heater, the diesel heater brain, the controller. They need to be inserted in this piece and that will connect into the uh, diesel fuel pump right here. Now the reason, obviously, that uh, AutoTerm doesn't send this all built into one plug is because you might be drilling a small hole to fish the fuel pump to a uh, uh, you know an outside area in the vehicle or, or the boat or whatnot so it's much easier to drill a hole that will take just these two wires and put them through rather than a fat plug like this so that's why they send it like this and it's very easy to insert these and the polarity does not matter at all isn't that cool? Okay, I pushed it in and I heard the two clicks, so they've locked into place. Then we take this back piece right here, flip it over both of the wires and that snaps into place too. Now the wires are uh, secure. I know if I bring this too close to the the GoPro it uh, won't focus so I'll be careful with that. Okay, let's go here. Perfect. So here's what I got. One of these adapters will fit perfectly on this um, sort of a, it's a bottom of a tank feeder anyhow. So we're going to use that. So let's, uh, let's get this mounted in here. Excellent. Save this for another day. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. And I know that that's a uh, 9 16 should just go on tickety-boo like that we can tighten this
and the controller is coming to life. So once it's connecting, we will go ahead and uh, it's not going to look very good on video here, I don't think. But momentarily, we'll start it up and see what happens. Okay, and it worked, it connected. So now as I understand it, if I press this and hold it, it will turn the fan on. And the motor is running. There we go. spitting out diesel. <laughs> so the fan is running. We have blower. That's good to know. Perfect. Powered and running. So that's ventilation mode. I can control that easily. And the temperature in the uh, uh, heater is 14 degrees. The temperature up here is 14 degrees. Perfect. Let's shut it off. Let's turn it on to heat mode. Which should be that. <laughs> no, nope, ventilation. Let's try again. We'll get it. Okay. Okay. Now we've got heating mode. So it is working. It took a, a few tries to get it primed and get the uh, diesel fuel. <laughs> I'm still spitting diesel myself. Uh, it took a while to get it primed through the line. Now, <clears throat> the acceptance of uh, a little debris in the fuel isn't so bad for something like this. It's harder on the fuel pump than it is the heater. So I've had to uh, remove the uh, fuel filter and that was because I just couldn't get it primed properly. And as the fuel pump runs, it's getting quieter. And that's because air inside the fuel pump helps to create the sort of concussion in the air. So this heater is definitely quieting right down. And uh, I think this is going to work. I'm going to scoot out and grab a uh, longer bit of uh, hose here. I don't like that. Uh, short of a length, but we're going to run the heater for about uh, 30 minutes just to, to run it in, make sure everything works good. But it is kicking out a good amount of heat. Yeah, definitely. Very nice and warm. All right. So I'm going to let that run for a little bit. And uh, yeah, 
So what I can do on my own is I'm just going to replace this with a longer piece so there's no tension there and that if this uh, moves or anything, it won't pull on the pump. But the pump is definitely quieting right down. Wow, an involved project. I mean, very involved, and it took a while. Uh, I'm glad you were uh, hanging around and being patient for the project. Um, but again, th there's just a lot to this, and uh, sometimes I get intimidated with, uh, you know, doing different things, cutting, fitting, um, and that sort of deal. And I'm glad uh, that I got it done. I need it. Um, I have some uh, adventures coming up very soon. And uh, it took a while, but it's, it's finished. I'm happy. It's, uh, it's working. And it's smelling a bit right now, but it has to burn in. It has to get... Uh, you know, everything functioning properly. So I'm gonna let it run. And uh, I'll talk to you uh, on the next one. See you soon.